welcome everyone. Thank you very much for being here and inviting us on this stage. Uh, without any further ado, because we have very little time as it is, I would like to ask all our uh, speakers to give a three, four minute introduction of the main points. What is it that they would, in any case, like to be said? And uh, what is it that they would like to uh, point out? So at the beginning, please give a speech for three minutes, and then it's going to be a free discussion of uh, issues as they crop up. Uh, Andre, may I ask you to be the first one to give a little expose to us? Uh, good morning from Slovakia. Good morning to you. Ah. Yeah, I, I was just reading again the title of this panel discussion, uh, Digitiz digitalization, modernization, reform, all, all, the, uh, all the above. And just yesterday, we initiated a series of discussions in Slovakia for different kind of experts from industry, from schools, etc. And we selected, just by the way, the, the slogan, it is not enough to catch up with the neglected past, we must prepare for the impacts of opportunities of the fourth industrial revolution, mastering digital technologies, automation, artificial intelligence, and all together. It takes a miracle. We have no choice, we have to try. So uh, I consider the name of this panel discussion is very, very actual for today, because in our country, uh, we have to hurry up and make a lot of steps to prepare for digital transformation of our country, let's say in 10 years or for the 10 years. Hmm. This is my beginning. Thank you, thank you very much. Now, Gabor, may I ask you to join in and give the most important points of your view? Yes, okay, so my name is Gabor Varga. Uh, I'm the National Technology Officer in Microsoft Hungary, and I'm very thankful for being invited uh, into this panel. Now, my role as a National Technology Officer of Microsoft Hungary is mostly about uh, facilitating the application of the latest technology in this country so that it will have a positive societal eff effect. Uh, and we'd like to do that in a very responsible manner because we recognize that if this process is not done right, then that there are several negative potential implications of applying the technology. And I'm especially grateful for being present at this conference because that gives me an opportunity to share information about the, the great tools, the rich tool set that we have at our disposal to um, uh, mitigate the risks associated with the uh, in, uh, integration of technology into uh, the processes and ultimately into the uh, life uh, of uh, this country. And I think that uh, that's, uh, that's a shared responsibility. Certainly, we are more than happy to contribute to that. But we, as a technology provider, can only provide the tools. And we are more than happy to do so. And I hope I'll have some opportunity to, to talk some of, uh, uh, about some of these tools. But these tools have to be applied. They have to be put in place. Uh, in fact, they have to be understood how they work and how they can work together to reach the end goal, which is uh, 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 a, a, a technology system which mitigates all the risks associated with uh, 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 applying all those technologies. Yes, thank you very much. So essentially, it's about opportunities, possibilities, and risk associated with new technology being introduced in the public education system. I see that Andreas Riffel is with us here. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Now, we'd like to ask each of our panelists to give a two or three minute expose about the most important points they would like to share and would like by all means to be heard by us. May I ask you to be the next one to give the most important points of what you think should be shared here? Sure. <clears throat> um, in Austria, we uh, have a network of uh, 3,000 schools, that's a little more than half of all schools um, of Austria that uh, work towards one digitalization strategy and uh, related to the lockdown situation that we had, uh, 
there were quite a few readjustments that were made, uh, but it is one central strategy, which is now called the eight point action plan. And uh, this is uh, the way that Austria feels, the Federal Ministry of Education feels to help support schools as well as teachers and other organizations to become more digital. And this is a strategy we could talk about. Thank you. So you have a general national strategy for the advancement of technology in the educational context, essentially. Yes, Thank you very much. Do. And last but not least, may I ask Gergő to introduce the main topics of your interest. Uh, good morning. My name is Gergely Nadri, and uh, I am uh, a high school teacher and an education blogger. Uh, I have the feeling that we teachers are a bit like uh, survivors of a catastrophe right now who are trying to put together what really happened to them during this spring of uh, lockdown teaching and uh, what are the lessons that can be learned. Uh, I think uh, that uh, maybe the, the prime lesson uh, that uh, we can learn uh, from what happened is that uh, no matter how long we are talking about uh, uh, modernization or that schools should become uh, uh, digital or should arrive to the 21st century, uh, time will simply catch up with us and, and it will happen. This is something that happened in this uh, uh, s spring with all the schools um, and I'm not sure that always for the best. All right, some interesting points. And now, from this point on, it's going to be an open panel. So if uh, you'd like to contribute, maybe you can raise your hand like in school so we can see that uh, panelists from abroad would like to uh, speak. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions, and please always feel free uh, to interrupt me or discuss any questions. But the first, of course, very important thing is, uh, <clears throat> what are the biggest challenges now, because we see education uh, from different perspectives, and I think we might see the challenges lying ahead uh, slightly different, but all these contribute to the very same picture. So may I ask you what you think the biggest challenge ahead would be for you as uh, working for the Ministry of Education in a high school, uh, digital skills, or for a multinational technology company? if there are any challenges at all. May I? Yes, please. Okay, so I, I think that uh, uh, the major challenge is that uh, uh, maybe we were thinking about uh, the modernization of schools or the reform of schools in a, in a wrong track. Uh, it was mainly a technical uh, issue that we were talking about and uh, and we were talking about uh, uh, bandwidth and what kind of... Uh, uh, computers uh, children should have or not have. Uh, for me, one of the major things that uh, turned out in this spring was how important is the methodology, how important are the, uh, the teachers, how important uh, is the mental hygienic work that they are doing with the, with the students. And we did not speak about it enough, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, what about from a technology provider's point of view, how did you feel, uh, what were the biggest challenges and how did Microsoft try to uh, come up with answers to this? Yes, uh, if you go, go in there, let me just second what you've said. I think it's very important to understand that the key point is not the technology. That might be strange from a technology provider like Microsoft, but we certainly recognize that. And we, that's why we are running programs for uh, uh, schools in Hungary called the uh, uh, System of Innovative Schools. Who are, and these programs are not focused on technology. They are focused on how to come up with methodologies to uh, achieve uh, uh, the end goal, which is you know, increasing the quality of the education system. Um, and uh, I think that uh, the... Uh, uh, transition to digital education platforms, which happened at the time when the uh, uh, schools were closed in March, it, it really gives us a big opportunity because, you know, being beyond the uh, obvious benefit of uh, giving school children the ability to continue their studies, you know, uh, uh, while the uh, schools were uh, closed, I think there is a, a, also a potential benefit in 
understanding the actual education processes. And I think this is a historic opportunity. We've never had such a great opportunity to understand what actually is happening uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the education process. But with the data signals that are created uh, while you know, uh, 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 executing the, uh, the uh, uh, education system uh, uh, processes, uh, they can be uh, uh, used to, uh, uh, to have a, a much deep, deeper un understanding. And we have one, a deeper understanding of uh, the uh, uh, learning process, then we can use that for a benefit of better decisions. Better decisions on the level of the, uh, the school uh, uh, teacher, individual school teacher, better decisions on the level of the schools, and uh, maybe on the school districts, and also uh, better de decisions on the level of the uh, uh, national education policies. Because um, uh, uh, this uh, 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 data, if analyzed uh, in a responsible manner, and you know, I would like to get back uh, to this because I think this is very, very important that it has to be done in an ethical and responsible manner. But if, it's, if this data is analyzed in a, in a responsible manner, then it can contribute to a fact-based decision-making process on all, on all level of the uh, education policies. Thank you. This, this is really interesting because uh, what you're saying is that there is uh, uh, a tech giant who takes on the responsibility of educating teachers and providing them with the methodolog methodological tools. Now, uh, I wonder what it's like in your respective countries. So may I ask you to contribute on this? Is it, whose role is it? Who, who plays the major role in uh, developing a methodology that teachers could enhance, because here we heard there is uh, a company that is doing it partly, of course, not only that, but it's one part of it. Uh, where do you stand? Where, how does it happen in Austria and in Slovakia? Yes, please, Andreas. Yep. Um, Which one? Yep. <laughs> Andreas, please. Ah, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. He raised his um, hand. <laughs> there's there's sev uh, several aspects to that. One uh, being that uh, we uh, leave the decision to the schools to uh, decide on their technology, and uh, so this is uh, part of the strategy where we hope that uh, we feel that within the, each organization uh, there will be a certain amount of uh, 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 teachers addressing to this aspect. Uh, what I heard uh, before from Mr. Nodori uh, was, uh, I, I, I think it's, we have the exact same situation and issue here in Austria because we know, we have known that uh, hardware and technology is only one small part, uh, but the much bigger part is on how to uh, reach all uh, teachers. And that's the interesting thing because uh, you always have early adopters uh, within a school that now had to perform a lot of tasks. But uh, now that it uh, gets a certain width uh, and that uh, it had to get this within a very short time period, you have to think about mechanisms on having an entry point for everyone. And so uh, we saw that there was a need to combine different technologies to even solve uh, at this point. And this were one of these uh, learnings we had initially that we need uh, to have cloud services uh, as well as uh, um, uh, regional platforms or local platforms connected. And we uh, emphasize totally on further teacher education to get everyone ready to use the tools. And now the second part actually is to focus on didactics to show that video conferencing is a nice entry point into the re-establishing uh, uh, contact with students, but afterwards, uh, this is, uh, you have to think differently because it's on the other side also exhausting to, to live online the whole time. If you consider that this, that a broad basis has to be established. Thank you. Andre, please. Um, yeah, we, we realized that, uh, that the schools were not doing very well during the COVID-19 crisis. Only about 20% of teachers were, we, were able to communicate online, really online, directly to, to, to their students. And then the rest, let's say 80% were being sending emails and giving tasks for students and then checking them after one week. 
It's a uh, it's due to to failure of of our equipment. I mean, schools are not enough equipped by by equipments, and teachers are missing digital skills. They are more more or less they are afraid. Many of them are afraid of of uh, using digital tools, and so rather they would pray not to re not to come COVID nineteen again. But this will happen. And this is happening actually now. So. Uh, the first step we have to do in Slovakia is to to equip, uh, to catch up with the shortcoming shortcoming equip equipping uh, in schools. So we have to equip them with, with digital technologies and also uh, teachers to to uh, with the with the digital skills. Unfortunately, to be honest, uh, in Slovakia, except of COVID-19 crisis, we had also the parliamentary elections in March. So, so now the, the government is starting a little bit slower than we expected. So, and the government is preparing the program. We suggested to, to skip, I mean, uh, make the program in some, some uh, um, priorities. The first is infrastructure, like a fast internet that should be finished, uh, let's say in November of this year for all the schools. And then we expect to have a real fast internet in 2025 later, etc. So then e-management of, uh, of schools to avoid uh, a lot of paper, paperwork and bureaucracy, then digital tools and digital contents, then uh, digital skills and the security. This is something in these areas that must be provided. We also provide proper from proposed to to give uh, to schools a choice to select what they need to prepare kind of packages of uh, let's say computer together with installation together with the training but the schools should decide uh, still we are we are seeking for what the government brings and what the government show us and then we will maybe discuss more yes okay thank you now uh, the question is um in retrospect, looking back on uh, last spring or this spring, how much help did the teachers need and how much help did the teachers get? Who should have helped them? How quick was each country or each company in reacting to the crisis at hand and what sort of crisis management tools were being applied in order to mitigate the negative effects of this. Now, it's really interesting because we have different uh, players uh, in the equation. And let me ask Gergu first, as a school teacher, how did you feel? Well, uh, the decision to go online was very abrupt in Hungary. So from uh, uh, Friday evening to Monday, uh, each school had to be prepared to start digital teaching. Uh, and most of them felt that they do not get a lot of help from the uh, government in how to transit, how to solve this problem. Um, the Hungarian education system is quite centralized and it, I think it became quite obvious that this centralized system uh, is not really good to handle each and every case. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I have seen a lot of schools which already had a kind of a culture of innovation, and these schools uh, could make a very uh, uh, seamless transition to online teaching. Uh, for these schools, all these principles that we are talking about as 21st century pedagogy were not, not a novelty. Uh, I think it's important to emphasize that uh, what we are talking about that should be done in an online uh, teaching is very much the same as uh, uh, what 21st century pedagogy at all should be or, or is called. A lot of uh, work done by the students, uh, less frontal teaching, uh, emphasis on uh, competencies and skills rather than uh, formal knowledge and so on and so on. So all the schools which, which, which had this uh, uh, skill set already and, and in this respect I think uh, 
uh, the Innovative School Program was a very good example of uh, Microsoft, which prepared schools for a long time for this. Uh, they could do it very easily. A lot of other schools were frozen for a long time and, uh, and stupefied, uh, having no idea what and how to do. Uh, so this is a question of uh, independence, because uh, now it seems that teacher were given a lot of free, teachers were given a lot of freedom and independence in choosing the different uh, applications that they would like to um, use in their teaching practices. Now, did it work in many ways or did it fire back? I think Andre, Andre said uh, there is like 20% of the teachers who are ready. Uh, how did you feel in, in Microsoft? Uh, was there a lot of pressure? Was there anything that you tried to do in order to help or was it beyond? Yeah, I think we were in a relatively good position and the schools who already worked with us were in a relatively good position because we have been investing probably two, at least two or three years into uh, you know, digital platforms, how to uh, help schools deploy digital platforms. And by the way, I'd like to make, make a comment here that uh, the, the most direct uh, value that we can derive from technology is obviously to support the, the, the students and the teachers. But there is an indirect value. The collaboration of teachers within a, a specific tool or across schools is uh, what we discovered as a good uh, a source of additional value which, ca which can be supported by, by technology. So the right uh, a technology tool set for, uh, to, uh, for uh, um, uh, schools and the education system in general includes not only the, the, uh, uh, the digital uh, platforms in the narrow sense, but also support for uh, collaboration across di different members of the education community. But coming back to the, uh, to the question, we, s we have seen two waves of uh, deployment of, of our uh, tech technology digital uh, uh, education platform. First was obviously uh, uh, on the uh, 14th and the 15th of uh, March, uh, that, that weekend, which I'm sure everybody will remember if, uh, uh, who, who, who was in Hungary at that time. Uh, and by the way, I would really like, like to applaud uh, the innovative uh, 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 teachers and everybody who supported them to so quickly deployed the digital platforms. And I think it was a really a great achievement of the whole uh, uh, community of teachers in this country that several schools were already ready by Monday or Tuesday morning. And for some schools it took, took a week or two, but I think a very high share of the schools were uh, really met uh, the challenge successfully. So this was the first uh, wave of deploying uh, our uh, cloud services uh, for uh, education. Another one started in, in uh, uh, August uh, or uh, early September when uh, directors and, 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 and teachers had the chance over the summer to kind of consolidate the learnings, to consolidate the information from uh, different sources. And uh, several of them uh, uh, have come to a conclusion that the, um, the emergency response phase should be over. And now we should build on this emergency response phase. We should reimagine how we do work in schools, how we support uh, our children, uh, and uh, uh, come up uh, with something which goes much beyond uh, than the pre-COVID uh, uh, traditional approach to education. So we uh, re-established uh, our efforts to uh, help uh, sc uh, uh, schools to deploy the technology. And, I, and we see a, a second uptake of our cloud services uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in schools uh, starting from September. Thank you. What happened in Austria? <clears throat> well, uh, at the early stage uh, in um, uh, April, uh, what uh, we did was we sort of split all schools uh, in two. Uh, the schools that were already well equipped with uh, different platforms and those that weren't. And for the schools that did not have any platforms uh, established, uh, we developed a onboarding service, um, which uh, Mr. Varga probably likes to hear about because it was based on Microsoft, where actually all a teacher would have to do was enter an email address and all accounts 
uh, would be generated also for students to match them together to be able to re-establish contact using a video conference system. So that was a platform that was available for all schools in Austria and within uh, two weeks, especially in the primary schools, we had over 20,000 uh, users that used this platform. So we still have the support structure on till now, but of course, over uh, the summer, there was a lot of consolidation and uh, the eight point action plan has uh, basically the, the second point of this action plan was that uh, one of the learnings was that uh, so many teachers communicated in different uh, communication channels with their students that this was uh, to a certain extent overwhelming, overwhelming to them. So uh, that was a task given to all schools that they would have to submit one uh, communication strategy per school to the federal ministry to show that they have agreed upon one system. And so these were the two major uh, fields we addressed at the beginning. And what we're uh, uh, going towards now is a centralized platform with a single sign on to all different services. And this opens it up to all technology provider uh, with uh, uh, standardized login uh, authentication systems. And uh, we also had uh, our national TV, which had about uh, 800 videos at that time uh, that uh, they made available uh, for uh, teachers and students to uh, help uh, with their online learnings. So that was the, the main parts that we started out with. And it went sort of uh, smooth uh, because we have this network e-education in place for four years now. And we have a good uh, further education mechanism. Uh, we have on one hand, uh, one organization called Virtual Pedagogical University that emphasizes on just online learning. But in addition, we have a big network of teachers that uh, support other uh, schools uh, in that further uh, education re related to different technologies. So we have Apple schools, we have Google schools, we have Microsoft based schools. And we also have Moodle-based schools, and so we have uh, uh, people there, and we have a budget uh, of about half a million euro per year just for supporting these trainers. And so this is a widely accepted system, and that uh, was very important that we had uh, this backup. Andre, do you have a, a comment? Possibly? Well, it was not going so so beautiful like in Austria, in our country. So the, the best schools are schools that were ready, uh, were prepared, let's say, in three, three, four days to start. And after one or two weeks, uh, they could, uh, they could let's say, follow the education in 70, 80 percent of the, the content of, of the previous content. Uh, generally, all the schools uh, quite equipped with the IT and uh, with some minimum minimum digital skills that wanted to get a support. They got a support from our digital coalition members, mainly Microsoft, Cisco, etc. etc. Other companies like IBM. They were supporting any schools. They were providing free of charge license, and also our telecom companies were ready to offer to you know, the 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 free of charge uh, access for, for teachers and, and even uh, uh, schoolers. Uh, however, my, my estimate is that only one quarter of all schools were able to or did ask for the support. Another part of schools, they tried to, to find the best solution. They were, they were like swimming in between or among a lot of uh, IT tools and using Zoom or whatever else. Some of them, uh, of course, just emails, etc. So, so to be honest, to be honest, only let's say 20 to 30 percent of all schools were really successful in using the online teaching, or were able to to support to to support the teachers or or uh, children. Mainly, we have a specific uh, specific area areas uh, with uh, so-called so gypsy segregated communities, and uh, they were almost totally cut off from the education, and it did not improve till the end of school years. So this is something what we have to be to solve now. 
We discussed that with our minister. We provided the the uh, crisis plan, how to prepare it, what to do. We offered uh, the um, uh, support of uh, companies for the next uh, upcoming few months. So now we are waiting for for replay. Unfortunately, it's not the best that. Uh, we didn't spend or didn't use the, the vacations, I mean, July and August to be prepared for the uh, next school year. So, yeah, we are a little bit delayed and we are really, really curious about how Ministry of, of Education will will uh, treat this, this lack. Yes, thank you. So it's interesting. The, the question essentially is whether Digital transformation should be a bottom-up, sort of a grassroots kind of uh, process or a top-down. And if both could be in place, then how do they interact, for instance? How do uh, the governments interact with private companies? And I think one thing in the crosshairs right now is data protection. It seemed, uh, I'm also a high school teacher as well, and it also seemed to me that all data protection considerations were sort of thrown out of the window at the beginning. And uh, as soon as we try to raise awareness and re or ask questions about uh, personal data being transferred or being sold and given, then it was like wiped off. So we have so much on our plate as it is. Why do you have to be nitpicking and trying to you know, force us to do this. We, we, we don't want to deal with I'm not interested in terms and conditions for Zoom or Discord or anything. I just want my students to be online so that I can communicate with them. Now, it's interesting, uh, and I would like to ask your take on this as a, as a teacher and a high school teacher. Did you pay any attention to it? Was it an issue? And were there any decisions made within the school community that would tackle this task? Well, I think... Uh, uh in, in some sense, we were quite fortunate because we already had uh, uh, Microsoft Office uh, uh, 365 uh, uh, installed, up and running, and I think the terms and conditions and the, the protection of that is, is acceptable. Uh, at the same time, there were, from time to time, certain applications that uh, teachers thought would be useful uh, and and I can tell you that no one ever reads the terms and conditions. Uh, so uh, I think a, a lot of problems happened in this way. Uh, also, uh, what I know all around the country, when, uh, uh, for instance, from physical education, uh, young kids had to send uh, videos of themselves uh, exercising to Facebook groups, uh, I think it is a very uh, slippery uh, uh, slope and, uh, and, and a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. No one was really thinking about it. Everybody was thinking about that uh, somehow what we perceived as traditional teaching has to go through. If it's, if it's a physical education teacher, then he, he has to see the children doing gymnastics. If it's a chemistry teacher, he has to explain uh, uh, reducation and oxidation reactions and so on. So uh, I think we were not able to jump as much as was needed to a very different mindset. Yes, I think uh, it's true. One of the greatest inventions could be an app that would read the terms and conditions and highlight red flags for you in there. So that would be definitely something that I would be in the market for. But uh, how do you feel as, as, a, as a company? We, we heard some praise uh, from yes. a school using your system. I think it's a very, very valid question. I, I, I really understand that in the very first few days, this was not at the top of the priority of the, of the teachers who had to make sure that the operation uh, continues. But I think it's very, very important. And, uh, and uh, I would like to say that not all education platforms are born equal. And I think, and I totally understand that not every uh, teacher and, and uh, uh, parent reads the uh, uh, data protection statement before they start using a, 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 a platform. But there are some platforms who just do not uh, plan and do not want to build profiles, personal profiles from their users. There are some uh, digital platforms who, uh, whose operators do not obtain any right over 
and uh, the data, the customer data, which is shared during the, the usage of, uh, of that uh, platform. And this is really a cornerstone, a le legal cornerstone for making sure that the data which is uh, created while our uh, uh, children are using uh, the platform will not be used for any unethical uh, uh, purpose. So, as I mentioned in the, in the beginning, uh, uh, it is not very widely known, but there is a, a very rich tool set to protect from negative uh, usage of this data. Uh, out of this tool set, there are some technical aspects, and there are some legal aspects, and there are some uh, business aspects. But I think uh, uh, it would be prudent to say that uh, if uh, uh, the usage of a cloud platform is not up to a personal decision of, of, of a private person, uh, but it is kind of compulsory because, you know, every, every, uh, our children have the legal obligation to attend school. And I think it would be fair, fair to say that it's very important that uh, uh, those uh, statements of privacy are read by someone, and I think it's very important that the data uh, uh, accumulated uh, during the normal education process will not be used for any purpose which is not consistent with the interest of uh, our, our school children. Uh, there is no space and time for going into the technical measures which uh, uh, can also protect from unethical usage of data, but I can, I can really say that uh, there are some very interesting uh, research projects going on. Microsoft also runs a, a research uh, uh, organization uh, uh, who, who develops uh, uh, special encryption mechanisms which also ensure that uh, uh, data can be shared in such a way that the, the, the uh, entity, the organization who processes that data does not have to learn the information embedded in this data in order to execute its job. So if there is, a, there is a, an entity who owns a, 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 some valuable data and would like to process it, for example, to run machine learning models to um, you know, really understand what's inside the data, then it can, can be done in such a way that the second entity who has a capability to, to process the data does not have an understanding of what, what is within the data. So this is just one example, and I, can, uh, uh, go, I could go on uh, long, uh, for long uh, uh, talking about the legal and the technical measures, which if they put together, they will ensure that all the, the data protection risks are mitigated. And I think this is a very important aspect, and I don't expect that each uh, student or each, each um, uh, teacher uh, really uh, considers uh, this in, uh, in deep, but I think that the whole system, the whole community, whole education community of this country and other countries really needs to uh, appreciate that, that if a lot of data is put together about private persons, then it can be used for good and bad as well. And we are more than happy to contribute to a solution which prevents the negative usage, usage of such data. Uh, are there any such safeguards in place in Austria and Slovakia? Or would you agree that uh, uh, there could be regulations to exclude certain platforms from uh, playing a role in education? Uh, to speak for Austria, um, what we had done in the past uh, was that uh, we have established uh, national-wide contracts, for example, uh, with uh, Microsoft. So the federal ministry pays uh, for all licenses uh, that uh, schools use. And uh, so uh, schools have security of knowing that they can, that this relates to GDPR. The same process is going on for Google at that moment. And so the biggest issue was to let uh, teachers know that it is important to use the platforms provided and not any other tools. And so we uh, developed over the summer a distance learning MOOC, which just relates on uh, the the uh, how much it makes sense to use platforms and so with this regard uh, this seems to have been not a big issue for schools uh, one of the learnings in addition was that especially in the primary school of course there's not so much platform usage but more different apps where it was not clear where the data would be stored 
And what we, uh, what one part of this eight uh, point action plan now is to have to uh, develop a sort of a certificate for apps, uh, which uh, then relates to each app. If uh, they certify to be usable and meet all the requirements, then they will be um, accepted in the centralized platform. And this then also gives uh, teachers the security again. It was not in place, especially in primary school at the beginning of the crisis, but that was one of the learnings. Thank you. Mm. We, we, I don't know if you can hear us, but we can't hear you. Andre, can you hear you? I was, I was so precise, I switched off the mic. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in, in Slovakia, in past, we, we had uh, an intention to purchase the Office 365 for every, every children, for every school, schooler and every teacher as well. Uh, but it didn't, it was not finalized yet. And uh, today's government has um, or insists more on, on the democracy, transparency, tra transparency of, uh, of purchases or, or kind of uh, liber liberty in choice. So, but, but however, it's not possible, of course, because during the COVID-19 support uh, in the last uh, school year, we recommended, at least recommended not so many, but two or three tools including Microsoft, Cisco, etc. We were sure it's, a, it's secured, it's, it's quite good solution, etc. But many, many schools had the wrong choice. They used uh, Facebook or email, of course, as I told, and, uh, and, uh, and I, I will not name others, of course. So that there are, I think there are two or three approaches. I like quite approach of Croatia. We read and we, we made it as an example for our government that they, uh, they built, the, the Croatian government built a centralized solution for every school, every teacher, every, every children. Okay, then the, the second possibility is to recommend a few suppliers of the, the IT technologies and communications, especially those who had their office in the country because they can support it immediately, they can be responsible, etc. I don't know what will be a choice. We are really curious about that and we are waiting for word from our Ministry of Education. However, the security was absolutely forgotten in the past few months and now, now we have uh, to, to insist of, uh, of set up a very precise security for schools. All right. So we are just waiting. Thank you. Uh, something I forgot. Uh, so in the audience, if there are questions you'd like to ask the panelists, please do not hesitate to Right, and the questions will appear and I will read them out aloud in the last five minutes. We'd like the Q&A session to be going on. If there are any questions, please do not hesitate to ask and send them to us. <laughs> the last thing is the role of teachers, uh, because we have rich data, we have big data, we have AI, we have machine learning, we have uh, Google. How is the role of teachers going to change, if in any way? Is it going to be a uh, positive shift? Is it going to make teachers uh, not needed anymore? We can have much better teaching and learning machines in school. Where do you stand on this? Gerg, may I ask you to give your view? Well, I, I think one of the major uh, uh, lessons is that we will not have uh, robot teachers soon in our classrooms uh, because uh, it, we already knew it but, but we tend to forget that teaching is a social process. It's something uh, that is an interaction between student and teacher, uh, student and student and uh, as we are sitting here today because we think that it is better to sit here if we can, than everybody uh, uh, coming in online. Uh, the same goes for teaching. So we need to be together. Uh, so I think we won't have these teaching machines anytime soon. Uh, we will have uh, 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 classes going on. I, I also saw on in the students that right now, uh, they they will do anything that you ask them, putting on masks or uh, washing their hands, anything if you 
tell them that otherwise we will have to go to lockdown. Uh -huh. <laughs> Interesting. As a company that develops such technologies, are you uh, happy to hear what Gergő suggested? There are no robot teachers? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Of course, we cannot see uh, too much into the future, so I would like to uh, make statements for 20, 30 uh, or 100 years. But uh, uh, jokes aside, uh, I think, uh, you know, we have touched upon uh, the quality of uh, teaching, the quality of the education system, uh, very briefly. And I think that uh, uh, beyond the obvious uh, metrics uh, to measure the quality of the teaching, there is something which I would like to highlight, which is the well-being of the uh, uh, pupils and the school children, and the stress-free environment uh, in which they you know, uh, go through uh, their studies. And I think that that's an aspect where we cannot uh, 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 be successful without uh, uh, human teachers for, so, for, too, for long. For long. Um, and, uh, and I think it's very important aspects of, of, of putting together a, a good uh, schooling system. And we have, we, as a technology can also help te teachers there. So for example, the technology can provide ready feedback to, uh, to uh, teachers if um, uh, 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 the pupils appear to be under stress or if they uh, appear to be overwhelmed with the tasks. Uh, but this is just a way to establish a feedback loop from the pupil to the, child, uh, to the teachers, and then the, uh, the teacher needs to do some adjustment to make sure that not only the, uh, the uh, uh, quantitative, but also, but also the qualitative measures of uh, 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 the uh, 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 cooling system and the education systems uh, will also be improved. Thank you. I was really impressed by the idea and I uh, read your eight-point plan and rest that you sent me uh, that schools are preparing schools and this is something like peer uh, education. Just because we have only three minutes left, may I ask you to very briefly summarize your view of the teacher or the future? Sure. Uh, the COVID crisis showed how important teachers are, especially for this uh, social interaction, communication with their students. And this has actually uh, even uh, changed the perception of the teacher in society a little, eh? how important it is to establish and have this contact, the social aspect. So I think that it will always be now in future hybrid form between uh, having online phases, but also presence uh, uh, um, uh, education. Um, but um, uh, the biggest thing uh, that we learned was that there has to be uh, a big change in the attitude of teachers uh, because they have a different role now. They become more coaches and what uh, the digital digitalization does uh, in principle is to open up. If you use uh, digital devices uh, uh, during classroom work, then you know there are many things that can happen and teachers have to address this situation and we have to uh, improve their uh, further education related to especially this subject, this topic to be able to relate to new technologies and to their new role. And this is what we're working on at the moment. And I think this is what is needed. Thank you. And Andre, in a yeah, minute. Thank you. I I'm also sure that uh, teachers will not remain unemployed next time in long future, but they change, they, their role is very important. The crisis shows that. But especially, they have to change themselves and you know, to 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 upgrade for the future future um, education. Especially in way that uh, we have to insist on a personalized teaching. I mean, I mean that any any pupil will will get what what uh, they can. So then then the next uh, uh, teacher should change a little bit also from that they will be supporting. Teach uh, uh, learning of, of pupil and not preaching from from blackboard, and then of course uh, uh, the education at all should absolutely transform so that uh, the the pupil will gain the competencies 
and skills for the, let's we call it digital future. So this must be done in 10, 10 years, let's say, or even, even in shorter period. And uh, this is so called, so I called in the beginning as a miracle. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So actually what I heard was that teachers will still have a job in the future, which gives me a lot of relief and, uh, and hope. And uh, I would like to thank you. Unfortunately, we run out of time and there is not much time left for questions, maybe next time. Uh, so thank you very much for all the speakers who came here and joined me in talking about the future of education. Thank you very much again. Bye-bye. Thank you.